All right, I'm just gonna come out and say it. We made a ballot song. I'm glad we haven't done B-roll of those yet. <laughs> Maybe we should have considered a different course of action than allowing me to touch them. That's right, this is the Vulp, and it is a balisong created in partnership with Nibali's. Yes, that's right, Nibali's. The maker of one of the very first G10 trainers we ever suggested on Amazon. I found this recently, and it's basically this knife, but like slightly better. It's bigger, it's better, it's like, it feels better to flip. You still need to get rid of the latch, but I think it was like, $12? Bigger and better, just like the US government. Oh, what? No. Has partnered with me to create what I hope can be the best Bala song for getting into the hobby. But before we talk about how this all happened and why you should care, I wanna give you a better understanding of why I did this in the first place. The truth is, I have thought that the Balasong community has been missing something very important for a very long time. Is it me? Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> Our hobby has been hard to get into. I'm hard to get into. <laughs> Our hobby has been hard to get into since its inception, from the initial low availability of good designs for anyone in the early days to the price of ballast songs now. This is a hobby that requires some kind of intimate knowledge and research to even enter, which can be a large barrier for some people. This is an issue that feels like it should have been solved ages ago. It just seems so simple. Some company just needed to create an original design that was good and sell it for an accessible price. However, this proved to not totally be the case. You see, the other problem with the accessibility of our community isn't just the balisongs themselves, it's information. While a few companies had created original and cheap designs, one of the other things keeping people out of the hobby was the barrier of information. Without easily accessible knowledge, knowledge to the inner workings of the community, people were left on the outside, often being turned away by surface level interactions in places like Reddit or Instagram, but also mostly Reddit. Now, people have tried to combat this issue before, with Lucas of Squid Industries doing an incredible job of proliferating as much information as possible on the Balasong subreddit. With monthly question threads and long, informative posts about the state of Balasongs and what to buy. However, there was still a lack of easily accessible and more importantly entertaining information to help this hobby reach a larger audience. And that, I believe, is where we come in. The whole point of making these videos for me is simply to share my passion for this hobby with as many people as possible, and to hopefully grow the community that I love as a result. I think that the growth ceiling for the Balasong hobby is much higher than many people think. At the end of the day, these things are just really cool fidget spinners, and I think that that fact alone can make these shockingly attractive to many people. While they might be illegal in many places at the moment, I'm illegal in many places. Why? Fidget Mac! Okay. I am hopeful that with more people getting into the hobby, the stigma created by decades of entertainment will fade away as more information becomes available. This is all to say that I've found myself in a very lucky place with the ability to both design something that I think will fit the needs of the community and the voice to be able to tell you about it. And so I aim to create this missing piece of the puzzle. This is the vault. So, why did we choose to work with Nibali's? Well, this all happened after they had reached out to me about their own product, the Morse. Ooh. We thought it was good, but knew it could use some design improvements. So I reached back out to Nibali's and asked if they would be interested in working with me on a new ballast song of my own design. And they were very interested. I was excited to potentially work with Nibali's partially because of my experience with their previous products, knowing very well how their first G10 trainers were something we actually recommended heavily. What was even better was as work began, we could easily tell that Nibali's really cared about the ballast song hobby and very genuinely wanted to create something special with us. A company with the ability to create good, cheap products that has never produced clones before is exactly what we were looking for. So this partnership could not have been better. Now, to begin going into more detail, I wanna break down the design of this thing. 
When I started work on the Vulp, the first goal that I had in mind was to create a design language. I wanted to base the design off of something concrete that could help center me if I ever got lost in the process. I'm concrete. Oh. That's why I decided to base the idea of the design off of my logo. The geometric fox head logo is something that I designed way back in 2013 and has been representing me ever since. I wanted to use design elements from this logo to help the Balasong feel more like a complete product instead of a random smattering of elements. For the handles, I took measurements of various Balasongs in my collection to get an idea of exactly what size I wanted them to be. Then I got to work on the pattern. The handles are based off of the nose of my logo, with the square at the bottom being the tip of the nose, and the chevrons at the top being the bridge, repeated a few times to create a good area for grip. The line going up the handle connects these two areas and provides a nice grip across the entire face of the trainer. By the way, did you know that Vulp literally means singular fox? Makes sense. Next came the blade. I already knew that I wanted a buoy style trainer for two reasons. The first being that there really aren't a lot of buoy trainer blades out there, and the other being that it makes me feel good, so back the fuck off. The process of creating the blade shape started with references. I gathered a number of great looking buoy profiles and tried to figure out what I liked about each. Finally, I started with a very general outline and then tweaked it until I felt satisfied that it worked with the handles. Now, the contrast between the curves of the buoy blade and the rigid geometry of the handles is on purpose. However, I still felt that it could use connecting elements to really bring it all together. So I added a cutout within the blade and then split it in half with a line. The square portion where the line emanates from resembles the square and line pattern on the handles, and I think that it really helps pull this balisong into focus as a full picture. Finally, I added a bottle opener to the 420 <laughs> stainless steel blade as a bite handle indicator. I knew I had seen this done before, but I couldn't remember exactly why until I recalled my old Omeme trainer. Ryworks used this exact placement before, and I recalled being really impressed with the idea, so I wanted to use it on the Vulp. It has purpose and usability. The fact that it was not only a perfectly functional bottle opener, but also a great bite handle marker really spoke to me and helped inform a lot of other decisions about this trainer. That's right, these design elements aren't just for looks. The width and depth of the cutouts on the 6061 aluminum handles were specifically chosen to give you the best possible grip without feeling uncomfortable. The simplicity of the design was done to reduce the manufacturing costs. The jimping on the side of the handles is very aggressive, but also relatively round to feel smooth. This means that while learning, beginners have a great spot to grip without it being too much. I'm too much. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> in fact, beginner flippers and their experience really helped me focus on exactly what I wanted to accomplish with this thing. The handles have a pretty large gap between them, and this is intentional. I wanted to reduce the risk of pinching as much as possible. This is also the reason that the Zen pen nipple is so small. By reducing these risks of hurting oneself when learning, I'm hoping to alleviate some of the issues that cause people to give up on balisongs altogether. Now, instead of of buying a cheap balisong that's too heavy and is gonna pinch you, you can get your friends into the hobby with a cheap balisong with good weight and some serious considerations put into the comfort of its experience. Another difficult portion to perfect was the weight distribution of the trainer. I wanted to create something that matched my preferences, but was also good for anyone looking to learn. So I decided I would aim for a slight handle bias that would help with rollover based tricks. On top of this, I also adjusted the balance so that Chaplin specifically would be easy to learn on this knife. The Chaplin is one of the first tricks that people like to learn, and I think it is also an important one to get right. Therefore, I tried to make it so that the balance favored slightly larger circles when Chaplining, so it was easier for beginners who were new to the idea. This is all to say that a lot of intense work and thought went into the design of this balisong, both on an aesthetic and technical level. We took feedback from flippers at Blade Show 2022 on the very first prototype, whoa, and implemented those changes into the final version of the trainer. After the first batch of Final Vulps was released, we got a lot of good feedback from flippers and have already implemented some important improvements in the current batches and future ones. 
This community first approach is actually very indicative of why I wanted to make this thing in the first place. I wanted to create the trainer that I never had. The thing that if I was just getting into the hobby would have helped me become serious about this art far before I actually did. Back in the earlier days of the Balasong community, there was almost nothing. The only things that existed either weren't good quality or were too expensive or just weren't actually made for flipping. But now we are in a bloom with more and more makers jumping into the scene with each passing day, there are more and more compelling options for Balasongs. However, there still hasn't really been an entry level option that has all of the features that flippers want for less than $100. But a branded clone costs less than $100. Yeah, but what about the feature? I have features! Oh god! And that's what is so important about this to me. The hole that needs to be filled is that of a good trainer at a great price. And that's what we set out to achieve. Making a Balasong that has the features and options that you need to really succeed as a flipper that almost anyone can afford has been a dream of mine. Now it's a reality. All right, let's say all of my faffing about has actually convinced you to buy one of these things. What do you actually get in the package? Let's talk about that. The box that the Vulp comes in is pretty standard for a cheap Balasong, but I still think it looks nice. It's got both the flipping fox design and my logo, as well as Nebali's, and I think that the black and orange contrast each other very well. However, it's the experience inside the box that counts. The first thing you will see is the manual for the Vulp. This is a modified version of the manual that used to come with all the Nebali's products and has been edited by me to add a little more clarity to the processes within. There are some great technical drawings inside as well as lots of useful information, but one of the most important things is the link at the top. I created a page on my website for the Vulp accessible at vulp.wilhirsch.gay. There have already been a number of posts there with an assembly video as well as other videos like trick tutorials and maintenance tips. As time continues, I plan on updating this site to provide more useful information about the Vulp and help people who have recently received it. Underneath this manual is your Balasong, nestled away nice and snugly into its ceremonial pickle sack, ready to take on the world. Let's get rid of it. My precious. Instead, let's focus on the other stuff. Included in this package is everything you need to service your Balasong. There are replacements for all the hardware, from pivots to screws and even bushings. Alongside this, you also get a special Torx bit and an L-shaped little tool. I'm a little tool! Yeah. That likes to make references to our old videos. Oh! Ooh, narrative structure! Narrative structure, I hardly know her! Here's the idea behind what's included. The extra hardware is for those who either beat their Balasong enough that it's necessary to replace, or it's for those who actually want to experiment with tuning their Balasong. I will be making a video about how to go about tuning the bushings on the Vulp at a later date, but do note that it is not an easy process. Tuning bushings requires incredibly precise measurements, and so I do not suggest taking apart your Balasong right out of the box unless you know what you're doing. However, all of this hardware does mean Mean that you do have the room to experiment. And the hardware has actually improved over the first run. The original hardware was okay, but had some major flaws, specifically with the screws. Now the screws have been updated to hardened T10 instead of soft T8, and there's better tolerances for the bushings. And we'll have hardware kits available for purchase for those that want to upgrade their original Volps too. The two tools included are done so for a reason as well. The small L-shaped tool isn't good for actually using to tighten or loosen your pivots, but it is extremely useful when assembling the Balasong, as I pointed out in my assembly tutorial. Link right there. The second tool is the most important though. This is a specially designed custom T10 bit that was created to help assemble the Balasong. Once you've got all of the pieces in place, this bit can work to help align all the parts of the pivot assembly and make what was originally a difficult process much easier. It's not the best quality bit in the world, but it will fit a full-size screwdriver and will do much better than the often included small orange torque wrench you've seen a million times before. Before we move on, I do want to give a quick tip on how to actually use a Torx bit when tightening pivots, because I think this is something that many people don't actually know. The secret here is that you should never try to tighten an already tight pivot. By doing that, you're simply adding more and more pressure until your bit or the screw strips. Instead, what you always want to do is loosen whatever pivot you plan on tightening and then 
tighten it in one swift motion. This is very important. You don't tighten an already tight pivot. You always want to make sure to loosen it and then tighten in one single twist. Finally in the box, you will find a small container of Loctite. This is a great little addition that will allow you to fix your pivot screws into place. The other thing that this is very useful for though is the Zen pins, which are actually Loctited into the handles. If they were to ever fall out from say, like a bad drop on concrete, you could easily just use the included Loctite to put them back in. Just make sure that you let it dry for about 12 hours before flipping again. By the way, one thing that's not included in the package right now is a good lube. However, a good lubricant is one of the most important things when it comes to taking care of your balisong and flipping it for a long time. That's why I have recently added Super Lube to our merch store. I was very annoyed with how difficult it was to recommend Super Lube to people. It's very cheap and is my favorite lube, but you need to buy it in bulk and then put it into smaller needle tip bottles manually. It's just a hassle. Well, not anymore. May I present to you Super Super lube, but I put it into a bottle that is more convenient for balisong flippers. That's what it says. That's right, now you can simply go to willhirsch.gay and purchase a bottle of Super Lube that was actually made for flipping instead of having to do all of that hubbub yourself. Or you could do all that hubbub, but then it wouldn't come in a cool orange bottle with a custom sticker, now would it? Oh, Mr. Willhirsch.gay, I love when my old comes in a cool little orange bottle with a cool custom little sticker. I'm perfect. Sticker, I hardly know her. Anywho, all this talk about the box is making me feel like I forgot something. Oh right, flipping! Yahoo! The flipping experience of this balisong has been my focus since the beginning. I wanted to design something that would be fun to flip and easy to get started with for newbies. The balance of this thing is slightly handle bias, which is my preference, and I think it is good for those who are learning. The action of the pivots is very smooth and allows for easy transfer of momentum during rollovers and aerials. Speaking of, I find the aerials on this thing to be especially pleasing. The handles fly very predictably and their medium weight makes it feel very satisfying to catch. The only thing that is impacted by the balance is its fanning ability, which isn't bad at all, but it does take a little bit of extra force due to that handle bias. However, the overall grip on this balisong and its performance through most tricks is honestly something that I'm very proud of. I'm very happy to finally have a cheap balisong trainer that I actually enjoy flipping and one that doesn't take a lot of adjustment when I go back to my more expensive options. Also, you've probably noticed that there are actually two versions of the vault. The one available on Amazon has a bottle opener as the bite handle marker, but there's also a non-bottle opener version available as well in places like AliExpress. The two versions are very, very slightly different in terms of flipping, but it's really not noticeable by most people. It's such a small difference in material and it's so close to the pivots that there really isn't that much effect on the actual flipping experience. Actually, since we're on the topic of things that I forgot to mention, did you know that the Volt comes in seven different colors? Did you? That's right, we've got orange, green, purple, black, teal, pink, and of course, red and black. For me! I really wanted to cover the gamut here in terms of color to make sure that anyone that got a Vulp could get something they really wanted or could mix and match between multiple Vulps to create awesome combos. Regardless of what you do with it, I'm hopeful that the Vulp can fill a much needed hole in the Balisong hobby. We are working very hard to make as many of these things as possible with a goal of having it be in stock all the time in the future. Currently, we kind of underestimated the amount of demand we would be seeing, but I know that with time, we should be able to balance it all out. So where does this product fit into the Balisong hobby as it is? Well, this trainer wasn't really created to compete with Balisongs at a higher price point than it. In fact, the main goal of both Nabali's and I was to compete directly 
with clone manufacturers who have products in a similar price range. I'm hoping that providing this good of an option without the moral qualms of being from a clone company, we can help people make better decisions about their first trainers. Of course, this is a cheap thing meant to fill a void, but it is not a perfect product. Compared to some of the more expensive options from Glyderco and Squid Industries, we can't spend the same amount of time and money tuning every single one of these to absolute perfection, but we can do our best to get close despite those limitations. However, tap and play are common at this price point, and while we are doing our best to fix it, there's only so much you can expect from something this affordable. To be clear, tap and play do not mean that your balisong is broken and is not a reason to return it. Along with that, I'd also like to bring up that Brandon and I are not the customer service line for this product. There is an email in your manual to contact Nabalis, which is the best way to get customer service if your product is damaged. They have proven to be pretty responsive and are very willing to help when needed. I will be making product updates and announcements on my second channel, but my knowledge of the production process is pretty limited as that's handled completely by Nabalis. Lastly, you're probably wondering, but Mr. Wellhurst Gay, aren't you gonna do a review of the Volt? No. Obviously, any review that we do of a product that we designed and benefit directly from the sale of would mean that anything we say would really have to be taken with a grain of salt. So that's why we decided to do a community BS score. Brandon went through the trouble to create a huge form and breakdown of the entire BS score system and asked over 50 people to give us feedback on the Vault. This included balisong makers, content creators, Patreon supporters, and just completely random people that confirmed they owned a Vault. After compiling everything and rounding out the scores, we ended up with this. We are pretty happy with the results, and this is pretty close to what Brandon and I would have scored the Vulp ourselves. The tuning score was a bit disappointing, but that of course is based on a lot of people who picked up the first batch of Vulps and discovered the tuning issues that it had. But we hope that we can improve that in the future. We didn't survey people on the availability score, since right now it's hard to rate with the huge amount that were made, but then sold out within literal hours. But in the future, we aim for a 10 out of 10, because it's supposed to be unavailable on Amazon all the time. That's the idea. As we come to the end of this video, I just wanted to bring up how grateful Brandon and I are about getting this opportunity at all. It is so cool that we've not only made it to the 100,000 subscriber milestone, but now have both cases and an entire ballast song that we've designed ourselves. This is something that we never expected to happen and a place that we never expected to end up. So we are truly grateful. To those of you that have already bought a Vulp, thank you so much for your support. I genuinely can't believe that people are getting it and enjoying it. I've gotta say, something that happened to me that was very interesting was I went from having the first prototype, which like I had it and Brandon had one, and so it was, it was only a couple, right? You know, and I had designed it, and so it was very cool seeing it go from something designed into something I was holding. But it was a completely different experience seeing it go from something that I was holding to something that other people were holding. That moment where it went live for sale and then pictures started showing up on Instagram and Reddit and I actually got to see people with their vulps enjoying it, that changed how I looked at this. It made it from something that was just something in my head and like, oh yeah, sure, I created this and now I like have the prototype, of course. But making it where other people were holding it and enjoying it, I don't know, it just made it real for me in a really cool way. So thank you so much for your support. I genuinely can't believe that this is happening. <laughs> Before I thank our patrons, I also wanted to thank Nabalis for being just so cool during this entire process. They've been very good to work with, and honestly, I'm very appreciative that they've been so gracious to actually help us on this project at all. This is something that I've dreamed about for literally forever, so the fact that it's coming to fruition now and is like a real thing is just absolutely mind-blowing, so thank you. But yeah, the last thing I want to do is thank the patrons. You guys are so cool and your support helps us so much. I love seeing all of the photos that are posted all the time in the Patreon community Discord. Uh, it's really cool when we do get to hang out with you guys on the private Discord. Um, I know we don't get to do it super often because Brandon and I are extremely busy, 
but it's really nice every time we get to do it anyways. Just the other day, Brandon was playing a video game and I got to hop in and we all got to kind of hang out and talk for a while and that was the best. So thank you guys so much for your support. If you're not a supporter already, you should know that three bucks a month, which is our lowest tier, literally supports us more than a thousand views on one of our videos. Based on playback CPMs and all that stuff, it's kind of crazy, but yeah, we don't make that much money off of a thousand views but we do off of one patron. So you guys are extremely important to us. So thank you so much for your support and I hope you're having a wonderful day. But that's pretty much it for the moment. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go learn a little bit more about the Vulp by practicing the ways of the Fox. Ooh, hunting season. Oh shit.